for us to be able to offer more options and, and answers uh, and to be part of these uh, decisions. So I want to wrap this up so that uh, Dr. Hotez can wrap up the rest of the day. I want to thank all of our panelists for a very rich uh, and layered conversation all day long, as well as the two plenary speakers who really brought it together and set us off on a very interesting day. And we will finish it up with the always interesting Dr. Hotez. Thank you, uh, the always interesting Karen Goraleski. A wonderful job moderating today. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I've been taking notes, and uh, this is kind of a summary of, brief summary of what I think some of the more salient points made by the different panels and the speakers. And then I've identified very briefly 10 cross cutting themes. Then I want to just end by making, throwing out some ideas for, for uh, possible next steps. So uh, in Joe McCormick's uh, first plenary, what struck me was that, you know, he reiterated that we don't pay attention unless it hits our shores, but now it's clear that hitting our shores even is not enough. It depends which shore it hits. If it hits a Manhattan shore, it's going to get attention, or if it hits uh, the shores of Virginia or San Francisco or L.A., it will. If it's hitting the shores of South Texas, maybe not. So uh, we have this problem of hitting the shores of the other America, uh, where the, as, as Michael Harrington, the social activist, would say in the early 60s, how do we get notice? And that's, and that's an important point that I took away from Joe's talk. With respect to the, the first panel, uh, this, it's, I was really struck by Susan's comment how we really have just hit the tip of the iceberg, uh, that, we, that we get a sense that something bad is happening, that there's widespread disease of Chagas and Leishmaniasis in the dogs, widespread among animal vectors. You can pick up insect vectors in PCR, Trypanosoma cruzi, and Leishmania mexicana, We've seen maternal child transfusion, blood, uh, tra maternal child transmission, blood transfusion, uh, but despite that, that it looks like a duck, smells like a duck, and I, I'm going to mix a lot of metaphors in the next 20 minutes. We are, um, we're not, we do not have any real program of active public health surveillance in place. We have no burden assessments. Modes of transmissions are minimally assessed. Minimal local and state lab capacity for diagnostic testing. I'm going to come back to this. Uh, uh, there are available drugs developed in the Jurassic era. No real vector control strategies in place. And again, if this were Lyme disease, we'd be all over it. But because it's occurring among the, in the other America, I think... I, I think this is why all we have now is the tip of the iceberg, not the iceberg. Uh, we're in Texas. We don't have icebergs. So I'm wondering if we just call it the ears of the armadillo. <laughs> but, uh, but maybe you could, guys can think of something better. Uh, neglected viral infections. Uh, uh, we, we heard from uh, Dr. Margolis that it's an urban area. It's not only a disease of the poor. And we heard about this very impressive emerging problem of dengue in not only in South Texas, but in Houston. And I asked the question, is it a game changer? Uh, so when you talk about the border infectious disease program, Hal, is it still relevant? Because the cat's out of the bag. It's, it's, it's all over the South. Uh, risk of hemorrhagic fever. Do we need to think about a dengue vaccination campaign in Houston? And maybe that's where we should be doing our vaccine introduction. We heard from Hal about it being endemic in the Caribbean, the Pacific Islands. Uh, 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 Hal made a, a nice series of slides about the changes that are needed. And again, it comes back to some of the same themes that you heard about with the parasitic infections, surveillance, improved clinical awareness, improved case management data, data to improve prevention, transmission, diagnostics, disease burden data. These are, again, repeating things we're going to come back to. Uh, panel 2.1 uh, from, from, from uh, uh, Dr. fisher Hawk pointed out this uh, important role of neglected chronic and chronic uh, uh, 
non-communicable diseases and this really important interface between TB and diabetes, which I think everybody was very intrigued about. And really, it was, it was a fresh story that we hadn't heard of before. So the the question then, should we be looking at other pairs of neglected tropical diseases with chronic diseases? Should we be looking at Chagas leash, cystocercosis dengue in populations that we know have high rates of obesity and cancer and heart disease and diabetes and chronic lung disease and is that would that be a fruitful area for for research and i and i think it might be uh from john andrus uh, we had a very nice presentation about uh, capacity development for embracing and introducing new technologies and he repeated several times the importance of making the investment case which i think bruce lee helped us a lot and we'll come back to that uh, the concept of laboratory networks, that, that's been one of the reasons why La John pointed out why Latin America has been so successful in rotavirus and rubella and some of the other uh, childhood diseases. Maybe we need a laboratory surveillance network in, in Texas or elsewhere in the American South or in poor parts of it, and maybe that, that would be a fruitful uh, area of discussion. Uh, the R&D panel pointed out a, a pervasive needs. Uh, we have uh, Rebecca Rico Hess pointed out lack of appropriate animal models of disease. Uh, we lack individuals who have expertise in all aspects of the ecology of infection, pathogens, vertebrate hosts, vectors, uh, laboratories with special containment. The uh, Mary Elena Batazzi took us through the, the process of translating ideas and discoveries into stuff, into new drugs, vaccines that require lots of candidates, money, and long timelines, and some of, some of the hurdles there. Uh, I liked uh, Bruce's uh, comparison of push versus pull technologies. I hadn't heard, heard of that before, but you know, as we, we've been working, collaborating with Bruce on both our Chagas vaccine and hookworm vaccine, and he's introduced us to this concept of not just being cost effective, but cost savings, and with a lot of hidden economic benefits, and I think we need to emphasize that more and more to the, to the investors. So let's go through the, some of the cross-cutting themes uh, that I took away from just about all of the discussions. Uh, one is uh, the importance of embarking on public health studies, that we really have lost emphasis on public health in the scientific community. I think, was that you, Joe, that said that? I think you said that. And uh, so that when we are applying for grants, unfortunately, a lot of things we want to do with public health is not always hypothesis driven. We need hard data for surveillance, otherwise we're crying wolf. Who's going to do this? Is it, is it academic organizations, local public health organizations, state, federal? Where can we obtain funding? The concept of twinning opportunities with local universities in South Texas, such as UT uh, Pan American, and I've just kept on thinking of the MEPI model. Well, we fig the Fogarty International Center figured out how we're going to partner uh, with African institutions, but we're not doing it uh, right here at home with uh, important institutions in, in, in South Texas and, and linking it with partnering with CDC, state, and local uh, health agencies. Cross-cutting theme two is transmission. We have inadequate data on the ecology of transmission, the vectors, the animal reservoirs, the dogs. We need to create risk maps for these diseases, and I think uh, that, that was an important one. Uh, the public health laboratory emerged as an important theme. We, we lack capacity building in, the pub, in local public health laboratories for some of these neglected tropical diseases, for Chagas, for Leishmaniasis, and Dengue. And these are just examples. I'm sure there's a dozen other diseases we can think about. So minimal local and state lab capacity for diagnostic testing. They don't have the kits. They don't have their, there's just no there there. And, that, and there's, there's going to be a huge need for this. Uh, new generation of control tools. Uh, this came uh, across, especially in the R&D uh, panel. Uh, we're, one of the problems is we're oftentimes making products for non-lethal diseases. Uh, the, the, it came through over and over again that our marketplaces failed, despite the fact that these are cost-saving technologies. What is the role of the NIH in this or the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation? Do we need to engage a new set of donors? Uh, to, uh, with, with all the new wealth coming out of the United States, maybe there's a new foundation that could create this as their niche. Uh, the economic downturn kept coming back. 
Uh, who's going to do public health surveillance when we're already getting terrible budget cuts at the CDC, lost in state and uh, local uh, public health capacity? The R&D downturn, I was just at the NIH for two days. NIAID success rate for grants is 10%. I don't even know what it is for, NA, uh, for the National Institute of Minority and Health Disparities. Everyone is freaking out about sequestration. One of the numbers uh, that we heard at the uh, ASTMH mid-year council meeting was a 7.8% cut, but if they preserve DOD at the expense of the other agencies, we could be looking at a 9.8% cut in NIH budget uh, Many people don't think it'll come to that, but there is that looming uh, angst. Uh, getting the word out, uh, scientists, we don't get trained to speak to the public. How do we get people to care about neglected tropical diseases in the U.S. affecting Hispanic populations and other people of color? How do we get people to care? I think that, that, that was a concern that was that's uh, several voiced. Uh, educating physicians and other health care providers, lack of clinical recognition of these diseases, lack of knowledge about how to do clinical management. Maybe this is an important role for our uh, National uh, School of Tropical Medicine. Uh, the social determinants of health came as an 11th hour uh, uh, cross-cutting theme of the thoughts of equity and justice. What is it about poverty that is a social determinant of these diseases? What else should we, we be concerned about? The concept of community commitment and monitoring uh, was mentioned. Uh, very important, linking public health with public policy. Where do we go with shaping public policy? And this is, I would assume it's very important for uh, Research America, linking it with the urgent public health needs outlined above, the importance of political commitment, linking global health with U.S. health disparities. Should we be engaging the Texas congressional delegation? Which caucus? Is it the NTD Malaria Caucus, the Black and Hispanic Caucus? Uh, where do we go? And I think that's something that uh, if we had more time today, I think that would have been nice to, to delve into that a little bit more. So uh, another, the last cross-cutting theme are neglected tropical diseases falling through the cracks. It's not global health, but it's, and it's not affecting rest in Virginia, so that we have, uh, we're affecting neglected minority populations in the U.S. How do we address these diseases of the bottom uh, 46 million? So what are the next steps? Uh, one question that, that I'm, I'm beginning to think about is this concept of neglected diseases in the U.S. Is it transformational? Are, uh, how are we turning global health R&D in the U.S. on health disparities, this concept of falling through the cracks? Should we create a white paper on the major themes and outlines of needs and next steps? Uh, are we talking about a viewpoint in the peer-reviewed literature, an op-ed piece, visits on the Hill, uh, engaging uh, the electronic media more? I think these are, uh, we'll have to really think about how do, we're going to do follow-up together with Research America and ASTMH. So I'll end there by uh, thanking uh, our sponsors and our associates, uh, particularly Research America and ASTMH, uh, Baylor, Sabin, Texas Children's Hospital, and there's a lot of people who worked very hard uh, on, on uh, the activities to make all of this happen. It really was a very meaningful day, I thought, and I, again, want to thank all the people who helped put this together, the attendees, and, and of course, the speakers and panelists. Thank you very much. Do you want to do, do we have time for, are we, are we done? <laughs> Couple questions. Okay. Yeah, oh, yes. Uh, we should also mention that we now have a reception to follow uh, after we take a couple of questions. And the reception is at Trevisio's, which is how do I explain it? It's you walk out the door and go to the left, and it's uh, the next. What? And it's and it's on the sixth floor, and you'll get a nice view of the Texas Medical Center and. And hopefully we'll be able to have a little wine and some nibbles, and uh, uh, that would be, uh, it'll be a very nice way to end the day. Joe, yes? Well, except the big fountain's undergoing repair, so I don't know if it looks like a fountain anymore. <laughs> of uh, looking at disease at home 
when it was already known that it was a huge problem elsewhere, and that's uh, the work that Roger Glass did early on with rotavirus. If you recall, he actually did a burden of disease study here in the United States and published several of those papers. And I think that probably as much as anything really launched the whole push toward rotavirus, even though everyone knew that rotavirus outside of the United States was a huge issue. Mm -hmm. It really took some of that kind of work uh, to, and, and, I, and it goes back to what you talked about and what was a theme, and that is surveillance and good hard data to show that this, in fact, is a burden in the United States and it needs to be addressed. Yeah, I think the, the issue is uh, we don't have the surveillance and the data. This is not even a priority. I mean, this, the, the people that work in parasitic diseases at the CDC are top rate, but they're grossly underfunded and they don't have the means to be able to even do these surveillance studies. So, so we've got a chicken and an egg. How are we going to get the support to even begin step one of, of collecting the data? Yeah, but this, we don't even have people going to hospitals. We have, yeah, we have seropositive people with Chagas disease waiting for, uh, as uh, Fox News says, waiting for their hearts to explode. <laughs> <laughs> any, any others? Yes, sir, in the back. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, Thanks for holding this symposium. I learned a lot today in global health uh, in terms of the neglected diseases. And I was glad to see that the comment was made about the PDP uh, that was shown up on the screen also. And for PDP, I think uh, there is a very good model in Japan that they use, which they call it as San Gaku Kyodo, which is in a, to make any advance in medicine and healthcare the academy, industry, and the government, they have to work together. Unfortunately, if we have to do that in this country here, the question comes of the conflict of interest and ethics. How much do we allow the industry to partner with uh, the academic institutions? So something that we need to work here you know, to, to get. Otherwise, uh, the economic problems in terms of product and development are, are going to be there. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Uh, it harkens back to the days of Vannevar Bush when he talked about the industrial uh, university uh, complex and government industrial university complex, which led to the formation of radar and uh, the, the atom bomb. And But this is one for peace. And yeah. Yes, John. You, you um, I think it was just one of your last bullets. By the way, that was an excellent um, summary capture of what was said, and it was, it was outstanding. But um, one of the action items going forward was uh, uh, going to Congress with a question mark. I would highly encourage that, and it's not something that's, uh, as you probably know more than anybody in this room, it's not a one-off activity. It's something that has to be mm -hmm. persistent with a long-term uh, strategy, and I would offer uh, PAHO support because uh, I personally regularly go to Congress to, uh, to have meetings with staffers to uh, toe the line to uh, with their support to the Pan American Health Organization and the value added to the health of the, of the United States citizens. And so we do have some opportunities if I'm sure you have your own connections, but I offer Paho support on that. Well, thank you very much. I mean, clearly we're going to have to engage Congress. The question is, do we do it now or, or do we wait till after the election? And Now. Now? now. Yeah. Always now, to the point of just it's a never-ending and never-ending issue. I just, uh, first of all, thank you for mentioning that the power of, of uh, scientists, program personnel, support staff, whatever, going to Congress makes a huge difference. And there is a big difference between talking to your member of Congress or their staffer about the importance of what you do versus lobbying. So every American, no matter where you work, can speak to a member or a staffer and talk about the value of what they do and never talk about, we need more money to do this. 
And there isn't any congressional office that doesn't want to hear somebody that works for the government coming in to say, uh, you know, we really do great things with what has been appropriated into our budget. And you don't have to start saying, but we need more. We want you to support this. I'm asking you to do this. Because they're, they're, the words advocacy and lobbying get often are used interchangeably, and they're not. They're very, they're very, very distinct and different. So. Well, maybe the idea of a briefing on Capitol Hill on this issue, and but making certain the right people come, that would be very timely. All right, well, thank you all very much, and see you over at Trevisius.